Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to talk about layers in Luminar 4. I believe that if you have a thorough understanding of layers and how they work, you'll be better able to process your images because it's going to open up a lot of creative possibilities for you. Now, whenever you have an image and you just go to the edit panel, you start out with a layer already. This is the background layer. And this is actually called an image layer. Why is it an image layer? Well, it's an image, it has pixels. And if you click on this little plus sign right here, you'll see that there's three different types of layers in Luminar 4. There's an adjustment layer. That's in a layer, layer that you're purely doing adjustments on. It's really not a pixel layer. It's not an image layer, it's just adjustments. Then below that is an image layer. And I mentioned that that's what this background image happens to be, it's an image layer. And then below that, separated from the other two, is a stamped layer. Now we're going to talk about all three of these and the shortcomings and the problems you may encounter whenever you use any of these three. Now we have this background layer. It's an image layer and I could do, I could do adjustments to it. I could go to the Essentials tab, go to Exposure, take Exposure down, it affects everything. So any adjustment I do will affect every single pixel on the image. I'm going to replace the sky. So I'm going to go to the creative panel and I'm going to go to AI sky replacement. Now what I'm going to show you doesn't matter if you use one of their built-in skies or one of your own skies. I'm going to use one of my own skies. Now again, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go to sky selection, load custom sky image. I'm going to click on clouds one and open it. So I'm going to replace the existing sky with my own sky. Now, technically, we have two different images here. We have the original image and we have that sky image. So technically, if you go to the layers panel, we should see two layers, but we don't. We just see the original uh, layer. That is a little odd thing about Luminar because in many ways, it's going to act like we have two separate layers. Let me show you. We'll go to the essentials panel again. I'll go to the light tab. I'll take exposure all the way down. You can see how it's only affecting the original image. So that's like the original layer, the background layer. It's not affecting the clouds layer, even though if you go up to the layers panel, it's only showing one layer. So that's something to kind of keep in mind and might make things kind of odd for you. And we're going to encounter this some more throughout this tutorial. Now what's odd about this is it isn't consistent from tab to tab. You can see how the light tab only affected the bottom part or the actual background image. Well, if we go to vignette and I take the vignette all the way down, you can see that affects everything. So it isn't consistent. And this is an issue you may run into. If you ever run into this, if you want to go and adjust the entire image right now, and let's say you want to add contrast and it's only working on the bottom part of the image, you want it to affect the sky as well. Well, what you're going to have to do is add an adjustment layer. This is a layer that's only for adjustments. So we'll go to the layers panel. We'll click on the little plus sign and we'll add a new adjustment layer. Now, when we go to the essentials panel, light tab, and I take exposure all the way down, it affects everything. So whenever you're doing something where you're replacing the sky, or something like that, uh, the augmented sky replacement to stuff like that. Add an adjustment layer when you're going to replace everything or when you want to adjust everything. It will work more consistently than as I demonstrated if you don't use it. So we're going to go back here. We're going to get rid of this adjustment layer for now. We're just going to delete it. So, all right, I replaced the sky and I mentioned that technically there's two different layers here. Uh, but, you know, as far as Luminar is concerned is what they show you, there's one layer there. But for this image, because there's a pond there, I need to have a mirror reflection of that sky in this front part of the pond. You can see how the back part of the pond has a reflection of the trees. And it's kind of blocking the sky. But this part here, I need this sky to be reflected down there. So I need to do something. I need to add an image layer. And that's a second type of layer. Go down here, add new image layer. Whenever you pick that, your computer will prompt you to pick an image on your machine. So I'm going to go with clouds one and click open. And when I do that, it's just going to jump, or I'm sorry, drop that clouds layer right on top and cover everything up. 
So I need to work with this to make that reflection work. And I actually have a video that demonstrates how to add in a reflection when you replace a sky in Luminar 4. I'll have that linked above and below if you're interested in watching that. But I'll do it real quick here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take opacity down so I could see the layer below it. All right. Then I'm going to go to layer transform and I need to get a mirror image of this or I need to flip it vertically because that's the way it would be reflected in the pond. So I'm going to go up here on this little icon right here to flip vertical. Click that and it flipped it vertical. Now I need to move it down so that it aligns properly um, or at least as close as possible with what we're looking at above. Now again, the clouds aren't going to be back in the back part of the pond because the trees, the tree reflection is going to be blocking that. So I need to just make sure that it's um, as good as possible, like down in here. So let's just say it isn't right, I know. So that's, let's just say that's good. For the sake of this demonstration, we're going to click Done. All right, so whenever it finishes, now we have these two layers. We have this cloud layer, which isn't done yet, and we have the original background layer. Now I need to edit the mask of this layer so those clouds are only showing in the front part of the pond. To do that, I'm going to use the brush. I'm going to paint in the effect, and I'll just click right there, and you can see. All right, so we're going to paint in here, and we're going to get these clouds reflected in this pond in this front part, not on the ducks. All right, so I need to take opacity way down. It's way too dark of a reflection. All right, so there, they're, they're reflected in there, and let's say that that is done. Now we have two layers. Now again, if I go to Essentials, let's say, and I go to the Light tab, and I take Exposure down, it's only affecting that top layer, the reflection layer. It's not affecting anything else. So you'll say, I know what to do. I'm going to go up to the Layers panel, and I'm going to click the little plus sign, and I'm going to then do a new Adjustment layer, because the Adjustment layer affects everything below it. Well, we'll go to the Lights tab, and let's see. We'll go to the Light. And let's take exposure all the way down. Let's see. Yes, it does. All right. So it reflects it. It um, adjusts everything, right? So we'll go to AI Enhance. We're going to take AI Enhance up. So it's affecting everything. I could see it's affecting everything. But let's go to this AI Sky Enhancer. Let's turn that up. Oh, what the heck's it doing? It's affecting the layer, the top layer. No, I pulled it down. Remember? See the line? Oh man, so this this adjustment layer isn't working right. All right, so if you ever encounter that, that's when you're going to need to utilize the third type of layer that is available. We'll go up here, we'll click the little plus sign. It's called a stamped layer. What it's going to do, it's going to take these two layers, the adjustment layer one, the clouds layer one. Actually, I don't need that adjustments layer one. I didn't do anything with it, so we'll delete that, all right? So it's going to do it's going to take these two layers, the clouds one layer, that's the reflection. And I could actually re I could rename that, I think, right? Yeah, rename that. We're going to rename that. So we aren't This is the reflection layer. Okay. So we're going to take this reflection layer and we're going to take this original background layer and we're going to merge those together to create a new layer and it's called a stamp layer. So we're going to go down here and do that. So it's taking those two, it's going to merge them together and put it on top of the layer stack. And it takes a little while to do this. Okay, it took less than a minute, but it did it. So we have this stamp layer now, and that is the layer that is active. So now, if I go to the Essentials tab, and I go to AI Enhance, I could take AI Accent up. Now if I take the Sky Enhancer, let me just blast it. See, it's just affecting the sky. See how it, it's not giving us that weird line anymore because we have that stamped layer up there. So I could come in here and this is the situation where you would want to use the stamp layer. Whenever you're getting a weird a effect or you want to just make sure that your adjustments are going to definitely affect the entire image, create a stamp layer. Then you'll know that all the adjustments you do will affect the entire image. So we'll come in here and we'll bring up foliage and all that. And cool. Now, here's a little, little tidbit, though, about the stamp layer. It is a stamp layer at that moment in time, 
Meaning, if I go back down to the original background layer, so I clicked on that, it turned the other two layers off. So we lost our reflection, we lost those adjustments I did to the stamp layer. But if I go now to the light tab, or the essentials panel to the light tab, and I take exposure all the way down, right? Remember I did this, all right? So it's making that bottom part dark. Go back up to layers, I'll turn on everything again, and you'll see it overrode all those adjustments because that stamp layer is covering everything up below it. So if you go back and do any adjustments to any layers below a stamp layer, when you turn that stamped layer back on, you won't see those adjustments. So that's something to remember, and that's one of the other, probably the third quirk of the layers in Luminar 4. So the first quirk is when you replace the sky, you really have two layers, even though it's showing one layer. That's quirk number one. Quirk number two is that sometimes when you're using an adjustment layer and you have multiple layers below it, that adjustment layer won't affect all the layers below it. It's just going to affect that top layer. And I did that when I um, went to the um, Essentials panel, AI Enhance, and I turned AI Sky Enhancer up. And we got that weird line because it showed where I pulled down that layer. So that's quirk number two. And then quirk number three, which really isn't a quirk because it works like this in all applications that have a stamp layer, including Photoshop and others, is that when you use that stamp layer, it covers up everything below it, and any adjustments you do after that stamp layer to any layers below it won't get reflected when you turn that stamp layer back on. So remember that. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of layers in Luminar 4, and then you could use them into your, you could use them to your advantage instead of having them hurt your processing workflow. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.